Hi guys, welcome to the Art of Server. If you've been watching my channel long enough, you know that I carry around this tiny little USB drive. And this is a SanDisk uh, UltraFit USB 3.0 64 gigabyte USB drive. And on this USB drive, I have a CentOS 7 Linux installation that includes a lot of my hardware testing tools, firmware flashing tools, and uh, stuff of that nature. And having a drive like this is extremely convenient because uh, once I receive some equipment, say I receive a brand new server, I might be waiting on an SSD that I'm planning to use a boot drive or something like that. But uh, while I'm waiting for some of the other equipment to arrive, I can plug this uh, USB drive into the server and immediately boot up and just to check and make sure that everything on the server is working well. Also, if I'm installing a, a new card or testing out a new card, you know, instead of booting up on the installation that might be on the server that maybe has different settings or different tools, I have this that I can boot off of immediately and have all the tools I need that are necessary to test out whatever card it is I'm testing out. So having a drive like this is very convenient. And I also have separately a, a free DOS uh, USB drive as well that I use, and that has all my DOS uh, utilities. So in the occasion where I have to use the DOS version of a, f a firmware flashing tool, for example, like SAS3 Flash or MegaRec or something like that, I'll boot off of that instead. But for the vast majority of the time, this is the USB drive that I use, and I can plug it into any of the servers here in the rack, and it will immediately boot up and give me a working environment that uh, I can use. So a lot of you have actually emailed me asking me, hey, how did you do that? How did you make a portable USB uh, CentOS installation? And to be honest with you, this is really nothing that special. All I'm doing is basically plugging, the, plugging this drive into the server and using it as a boot drive uh, to install my CentOS Linux installation. And so anyway, there's really nothing that special about it. But since I've gotten that question so many times, I thought I would make a video showing you how I go about doing that and just a few extra tips and stuff like that that I will share with you. All right, so this is that USB drive with all my secrets on it. But uh, today I'm going to use a brand new one. This is a 32 gigabyte uh, UltraFit USB 3.0 drive as well. And I'm going to plug this into this server here. This is a Dell R630 and there is a internal USB drive right here. And so I'm going to plug it in uh, right here. Now this is a blank drive, so there's nothing on it right now, but we're going to install CentOS 8 on it. And so separately, I have this other USB drive that has the CentOS 8 installer. Now, if you want to know how to make a uh, CentOS uh, installer USB drive, I have another video on that topic and that shows you how to do that. So I'll leave a link in the corner in this section of the video to that video if you want to check that out. But basically that's what I've done. I have a CentOS 8 installer USB drive and I have a blank uh, USB drive over here. And basically I'm going to plug this in up front here. And I'm going to boot up on the installer and install CentOS on that USB drive. And I'll show you how I go about that. Now, just a little tip about doing this. There's a reason why I'm doing this on this Dell server because Dell actually makes it very convenient. When you're choosing from the boot menu, which USB drive to boot from, it specifically tells you whether you're, it's a front USB port or the internal USB port. And so that makes it very easy for you to distinguish which drive you want to actually boot off of. And in this case, it would be the installer. But on other systems, you're not going to uh, necessarily have that distinction. It might just show you a list of USB drives that are attached, to, including the one that you want to install on, which might not have anything on it. And so you could do a little try and, uh, trial and error and try one. If it doesn't work, try the other, that type of thing. Um, Another way to go about that is to use a different brand of USB drives because sometimes on the list of bootable USB drives that it will show you, uh, it will indicate it's a Samsung drive or a SanDisk drive or something like that. And so that might help you kind of distinguish which drive is which. Uh, with Dell servers, they very conveniently uh, designate um, the front USB port and the internal USB port in the boot menu. So it makes it very easy to go about and pick the right drive to boot off of. All right, so let me close this guy up.
and we'll get on the uh, virtual console and show you how the installation goes. And so consequently, I, I guess I'll also be showing you how to install CentOS 8 if you're not familiar with that. And so I guess this video is also a how to install CentOS 8 on a Dell PowerEdge R630 video. All right, so let's go about and uh, get that going. All right, guys, here I am uh, at the login page of the iDRAC. We'll go ahead and log in here. All right, so I'll go ahead and power on the server and we'll launch the remote console. All right, so you'll wanna keep your eye as this thing uh, boots up. because so you wanna intercept where it allows you to, to choose the boot menu. All right, so here I'm gonna press F11 and you'll see that the boot manager is highlighted there. So it's going to give me the boot manager menu uh, once this thing finishes initializing. All right, so at this point, I'm going to click on the one-shot boot menu. All right, so you'll see that it gives us a list of all the bootable devices that are connected to this system. And you'll notice that there are two USB drives listed here. And so this one says internal USB one. And so that's the drive that's on the inside by the power supplies that we plugged in. That's the tiny little uh, three, 32 gigabyte drive that's blank right now. And then you'll also notice that the other one is listed as front USB two. And so this is the second port on the front and that's the one that we're gonna to wanna to boot off of. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that one. Okay, so at this point, I'm at the bootloader of CentOS Linux 8. And usually by default, it says test this media and install CentOS 8. Uh, if this is a fresh media that you've just created, it might not be a bad idea to test it. Basically, what it's going to do is do a checksum on the entire uh, image and make sure the checksum matches the, uh, is this the correct one? I've used this uh, several times now, and so I'm pretty confident this drive is fine and I wanna kind of save some time. So I'm gonna go ahead and instead pick the top option where I'm just gonna go ahead and just begin the installation. So uh, I'll hit enter on install CentOS Linux 8. All right, so here is the installer screen. We'll go ahead and uh, just go with the default of English and English United States, and I'll click on continue. All right, so at this screen here, we get to basically make some configuration changes. I'm in California, so I will change the time zone here. You can, of course, always change this after the installation, but um, it's nice to kind of have it done and ready to go. Some of the important items you wanna make sure that you uh, check out is the software selection and as well as the installation destination. So before we get to that part, because uh, after that we'll begin the installation, I'm going to go under software selection. And by default, it's chosen server with GUI for me. And I personally prefer to have a minimal install and just add the things that I need. And so I will uh, choose minimal install. Of course, there are other options here that you can go into. And of course, there's a further granularity on the right side here where you can add specific things within uh, that selection that might not be included by default. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and pick minimal install and then I'll hit done. All right, and so the last part here is the installation destination. So, okay, on this server, I actually have a set of SSDs that are in the front bays of the server, and I'm not gonna use those for the installation. As you know, I installed the 32 gigabyte USB drive specifically for this installation. And so it's at the very end of the list here, so I have to kind of scroll to the side here, but I'll go ahead and select that disk as my main installation target. Okay. So now at this point, you could just leave it at automatic and hit done and it'll automatically partition and create various file systems and stuff like that for you. Uh, I like to customize it a little bit. And so I will click on custom and then uh, select done. And from this point on, I can basically create it 
uh, the layout of the file system however I wish, but I do kind of generally like the default uh, setup. It's just there's a few things I usually like to tweak. And so what I'll do here is I'll click on create them automatically, which is basically what it would have done uh, had you chosen the kind of automatic setup. All right, so it's created a separate boot partition of roughly one gigabyte and it's uh, added a almost two or three gigabyte swap. And that's the part that I'm gonna remove because this is a portable USB installation. I'm just not gonna put swap on here. So let me go ahead and remove that. And of course that gives me an extra about two to three gigabytes of space. And I'm gonna make sure that I don't waste that space and just reallocate that to the root partition. So, now you don't have to be really exact here because the system will basically automatically adjust to whatever is available. So I'm just going to go crazy and add like, you know, like what, uh, five, you know, gigabytes there. And of course there's not enough, but when I click update, it will automatically adjust to whatever is available and leaving me with 1.3, um, you know, uh, megabytes of space. That's okay. We'll leave that alone. Uh, I'd like to also change the volume group name by default. It, it chooses CL for CentOS Linux, I suppose. And I like to uh, change this to something like system. So I know that this uh, volume group is specific to the system and not any of the data and stuff like that. So, all right, so I'll do that. And that's pretty much it. So I'll go ahead at this point, click done. So it's going to give you a warning down here that says uh, warning check storage configuration. Basically what this is about is that it's complaining that there is no swap partition. And so generally speaking, it is good practice to have some swap partition in there because uh, it allows the system to basically page out uh, memory that it might not be frequently used and, and that kind of stuff. So optimizes how you use your RAM. Modern systems tend to have a lot of RAM anyway, so I tend not to worry about that too much. But in particular, this is going to be a portable installation where I'm moving it from system to system. So, uh, you know, the amount of RAM is going to is going to vary. I might have a system with very little, might have a system with a lot of RAM. So in general, I'm just not going to um, create a RAM uh, or a swap partition on this drive. So anyway, uh, to bypass this, you basically just click on done again and it'll have to accept it. And so here it gives you kind of the summary of steps that it's going to take to change. And, you know, probably is a good idea to just review this and make sure everything is as you had uh, selected it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just say accept changes. All right, so now we're back at the installation summary screen. And at this point, you can basically click on begin installation. Uh, there are a couple other settings here. For example, you can uh, set up your host name right now and the network configuration. And that way uh, you can already be connected to the network once everything is booted up. But you can always do that after the installation. So that's not necessary to do at this point or at this stage. And in particular for this setup, again, because this is going to be a portable drive, I'm just going to have it uh, pull DHCP. And so that's the default anyway. And so we'll just leave that alone. Uh, also, if you want to have a more secure installation, there are security policies that you can apply that will you know, basically apply stricter uh, security policies uh, via SE Linux and other things. And so you can go ahead and, and choose those if you want to. I find that at least for lab setup where I'm using this to test equipment, stuff like that, the things like that tend to get in the way, then they are uh, productive. And so I just kind of leave that out. But all right, so let's go ahead and we'll click on begin installation. And so you can see down here, there's a progress bar that shows you what it's doing and um, whether it's done or not. Now, there are two other things you need to do here is to set the root password as well as create a user account. And so that's because uh, oftentimes you will not be able to connect remotely uh, as the root account. And that's just general uh, good security practice to not have remote access to a very high privileged account. But anyway, uh, I'll go ahead and click on this and we'll uh, type in some password and then I will also create a separate user account I'll call art of server and I will check the make this administrator and this basically puts the account in the wheel group that gives it access to privileged commands like sudo and stuff like that All right, so it doesn't really like the, my choice of uh, password. And so I'm gonna bypass that by basically clicking on done twice. This is not meant to be a, high, a highly secure system or anything like that, it's just a demonstration. So 
I do normally recommend that you pick very good passwords and uh, follow good security practices. But anyway, for this demonstration, we're going to go ahead and move on. All right, so this is going to take a little bit of time. I'm going to let it record and probably fast forward through it a little bit, but I'll come back when it's done. All right, guys, looks like the installation is now complete. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on reboot and we're gonna go uh, down to the server and make sure we pull out the installed USB drive and allow it to boot up on that internal USB drive that we just finished the installation on. All right, guys, last step here is to basically remove the installation USB drive and now the system should boot off of that internal USB drive and so anyway that's all there really is to it like I said there really is no magic to making that portable USB uh, CentOS 7 Linux installation it's just basically using the USB drive as a install target and so I just wanted to show you guys uh, that and if you're new to CentOS hopefully that gets you kind of uh, started and uh, understanding the install process it is really fairly simple there's not much to it it's nothing fancy really but uh, it does work well and so anyway I uh, hope you like this video if you did make sure to give me that thumbs up and if you're new to this channel and you'd like to see more server related topics make sure to subscribe to my channel also if you want to support my channel check out my eBay store I'll leave a link down in the video description for you I've got all sorts of server goodies for you guys especially uh, Dell stuff and as well as other brands of servers Alright guys, thank you very much for watching and have a great day. Bye bye.